Good day and welcome to this edition of Focus On. I'm Moik Peterson. The strategic intent of Gauteng Provincial Government is to use infrastructure development as one of the central pillars of economic growth, development and recovery. On Friday, the Gauteng Department of Infrastructure Development will share its plan through the delivery of the 2022-2023 budget speech. In anticipation of the speech, let me welcome Head of Department Tulani Umdedani, who joins us to give a preview of what can be expected and what the main areas of focus will be. Tulani, let's start off our conversation by me asking, how does the implementation of infrastructure development projects lead to the creation of job opportunities and improvements in the quality of life of communities? You understand that um, infrastructure um, is one of those uh, strategic uh, interventions by government in general not only in this country, but uh, throughout many other countries, both developing and also uh, developed countries. Because it, infrastructure development remain the catalyst, the catalyst for economic growth. It also assists towards job creation, uh, particularly to support uh, economic opportunities for small businesses and SMMEs. Also, it, assist in driving the social impact and transformation in different countries. In South Africa as well, it, uh, infrastructure development is assisting to, towards skills development, uh, but particularly your technical skills and special skills that we are running short of in this country, such as your carpenters, your, your, your boilers, your, your, your painters, and also your interior designers and so forth. So it remains a, a, a drive and catalyst, catalytic program to support economic growth. Can you elaborate further on the public infrastructure build program and how it allows for the empowerment of emerging enterprises? Um, it does um, uh, assist the emerging uh, enterprises in different ways. You recall that uh, particularly the SMMEs or emerging enterprises, their first, first point of call when they are establishing their businesses is to knock in the doors of government. In this regard, the construction sector or construction businesses knock in the, in, in, in the infrastructure de, uh, department to support them in various ways. Part of that support includes gi us giving them the, the linkages to various institutions that, that, that can further support them, also to refer them to institutions that can assist with training and development. And of course, as a department, we are assisting around issues of training, and we give um, uh, contractors a specialized training so that they can be able to assist both government uh, in, in terms of uh, infrastructure delivery, but also to assist the um, private sector um, and, 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 and leverage their economic opportunities. But beyond that as well, part of government intervention is to assist SMMEs around the targeted procurement in terms of ensuring that part of our budget and programs are in fence towards uh, assisting the emerging enterprises. What is the importance of flagship programs such as expanded public works program and the contractor development program? The intention of this program, historically, we recall that uh, the, it's, it's about public employment opportunities. Public employment opportunities, not necessarily opportunities that are directly employment to government in the form of employees, but uh, the government is saying through its uh, budget and financial spend, we must ensure that part of the beneficiary program is to assist towards uh, uh, where work opportunities and part of that drive is to deal and respond to what we call social ills of this country such as your um, reducing poverty um, dealing with issues of inequality and also issues of unemployment but more importantly as well to address issues of um, social and economic historical imbalances in the country so these um, uh, um, uh, work opportunities are, are, are primarily to assist those vulnerable groups, such as the rural communities, the township communities, the unskilled um, um, individuals in the country, people that are unemployed, to be assisted through the government 
spent in terms of how we are um, um, uh, procuring our, our, our services through our goods and services program that we have as, as government. How will the systems and controls be improved to ensure efficient use and accountability for public resources at the disposal of the department? We've got a number of opportunities that uh, we've put in place towards improving our governance. Part of that include uh, um, um, improving our ICT system to ensure that we have got a proper um, um, training system of all the processes and activities that we do, but also to we are establishing and resuscitating what we call a primavera system, which is our ICT system, that will ensure that um, um, our project governance processes are improved. There's accountability of all activities on a on a day to day basis. We are able to have a live system that will be able to give us information at at at, uh, at at any given time. Secondly, we are also wanting to ensure that our maintenance system, tr through what we call Akipas, is able to respond within 24 hours. For example, if you go to a hospital and there would be an emergency services by the hospital, and we don't want the clinicians and surgeons to be um, delayed by us uh, as infrastructure. And we want to ensure that uh, at, at any given time, hospitals are able to, to get immediate support from the infrastructure team within the hospital. Through that, we have established that in all the academic hospitals in the province, there is a team of technical uh, people who are experiencing different skills and traits who are available to assist the, 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 the hospital team. The second part of um, um, uh, improvement that we have put in place, we have developed a capacitation plan to ensure that all our officials are trained in specialized work. For example, you could be an, an engineer, as we know that all engineers train in, in, in different universities, but we are not trained on a sector-based environment. And therefore, part of our uh, internal development is to ensure that our technical staff and uh, professionals and engineers are sector-based, those that will be dedicated to a uh, department of health, so they are able to respond to issues of specialized nature of hospitals and those that will be supporting schools and so forth so that uh, the principles of smart schools and so forth are also enhanced. The other issue is to ensure that um, the ultra general uh, audit findings that we picked up historically in the, in the last few years, all those findings are, are, are responded to and we reduce any new uh, additional findings and or at least repetitive findings. So part of our plan that we've put in place is that we want to ensure that this coming uh, audit in the year 2022, the findings that were picked up by the Auditor General are not repetitive in nature, but also they are reduced to ensure that we make certain improvement. But finally, also, we, uh, we have also developed our own internal war rooms for infrastructure development. The reason for that is to ensure that um, um, we troubleshoot on certain challenges of infrastructure. And if there are any internal bottlenecks uh, that we have as a department, we're able to uh, relate to those issues and be able to intervene with speed and, 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 and in an efficient manner. But more one of the issues that we've got to do as a department and, and as an organization is to ensure that we, we, we increase accountability and consequence management within the, uh, the department to ensure that our behavior and of board management and staff is ethical and all our officials can account of the work that they are responsible for. As we conclude um, our conversation, um, can you explain the concept of smart infrastructure solutions and how it will be implemented. Also, how is this the first step in building sustainable communities? Basically, the concept of smart uh, infrastructure is basically to ensure that uh, we are enabled by technology, we are driven by technology. Our schools, for example, one of the things that we are saying as a province must have a Wi-Fi. That will increase one 
the, the learning environment for our young uh, children, and show that um, our, our our children in, in school they are they are friendly with the with the with the ICT, they are able to use uh, technology at a very young age. Secondly, to ensure that um, um, the infrastructure uh, that we have is interconnecting with other infrastructure that would help teachers and schools to to respond to various um, um, educational needs. But most in, in, importantly, to ensure that our infrastructure as well is digital by its nature. Your leaves must be able to have voice facility, must be able to respond to people with disability who cannot see, but who can also use voice and so forth. Basically, that, that's what we, we, we talk about, smart infrastructure. But for us, uh, uh, there are pillars that would uh, assist us to ensure that um, we, 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 we monitor that uh, our, our, our infrastructure in schools and hospital is it's smart enough, that it must interconnect first. Secondly, it ma the, the smart technology must be in, in, institutionalized in all infrastructure building. It must be a, a policy of government. Secondly, it must respond to all other social challenges, such as your security um, challenges, that, challenges that we have. You recall that part of the challenges that we have is that a number of infrastructure is being stolen. Unless the infrastructure is properly coded, the infrastructure is properly coded, there's enough smart security in, in various buildings. Then we can be say, saying that uh, uh, we are responding to those kind of expectation in terms of uh, smart infrastructure. But more importantly, our infrastructure, we are saying, must be efficient enough, um, one, in connect um, properly with the with the cities and the, and, and 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 the city in smart infrastructure program, we uh, ensure that uh, we reduce the, um, energy electricity cost. Also, we reduce the issues of water and waste management in all our government buildings. That's what we are talking about: uh, smart infrastructure. All right, that concludes our conversation. Thank you to my guest, Tulani Mdedani, head of department, um, Gauteng Department of Infrastructure Development. And to our viewers at home, it's goodbye for now.